Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our hadith session again. And uh, <clears throat> now I'm going to share some uh, a hadith and virtues of Sha'ban and the preparation for Ramadan. As I said in my last lesson, in my last video, that today is, is, is the 8th of April 2020, 8th of April 2020, which means 15th of Sha'ban. 1441 15th of Sha'ban 1441 what does that mean that means you only have about 14 more days to Ramadan 14 more days to Ramadan means Ramadan is coming in 14 days time or 15 days maximum okay so what do we need we need some preparation for Ramadan yeah inshallah yes even the situation is not very good it's a uh, coronavirus COVID-19 and then people are worried that what's going to happen but we need to prepare for Ramadan yes that's something we go to the mosque or we don't go to the mosque we have to fast at home yeah so for that we need preparation isn't it so what I need I will talk about the preparation of Ramadan but before I do that can I ask those brothers and sisters out there can you please copy the link and share it with your, all your family members to join in so they can understand the preparation of uh, Ramadan virtues of Sha'ban yes Jazakumullah khairan. So share the link to everyone. Share, share the link with everyone. Inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. And one more thing I want to tell you before I start that uh, follow my YouTube channel. You will find my uh, on my page. You will find my YouTube link. Follow my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more of my videos and more sessions. Inshallah. And you can write on the comment box as well what your next video should be. Yes. Based on your comment, based on your topic, I can make videos as well. So just write the topics in the comment box, inshallah. Say, Chef, make a video on this topic. Okay, inshallah. Jazakumullah, I'll do that. <clears throat> okay, so, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Bismillahi walhamdulillah, was salatu was salamu ala rasulillah, amma ba'd. Here we come with Sha'ban, as I said. So let's start with the to talk with the Sha'ban. About Sha'ban. Sha'ban is the month which comes before Ramadan. And before that, Rajab comes. In the hadith, it says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to start preparation for Ramadan from the month of Rajab. As soon as Rajab used to come, he used to start talking about Ramadan, he used to start fasting, he used to start increasing the ibadat. That is the part of preparation. What do you mean by preparation for Ramadan? It's to increase your ibadat. It's to increase uh, your closeness to Allah. Yeah, your closeness to Allah. So you take yourself more closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as Rajab is gone already, yes, and Sha'ban, the 15 days of Sha'ban has gone already as well. So what do we do now? Now we prepare ourselves for Ramadan. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to fast a lot. What did, he, what did he used to do? He used to fast a lot in the month of Ramadan. In the hadith, authentic hadith, it says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to fast so much that people used to start saying that he's not going to stop fasting. People used to say he's not stopping fasting. Means it's like ongoing, constantly fasting. Whenever you're asking, whenever you're seeing Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the mosque, he's, he's fasting. So in the month of Sha'ban, he used to fast a lot. Yes, Illa qalil. In the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, he says, Illa qalil. Except last few days. He never used to fast on the last few days. So in Sha'ban, as we are still in Sha'ban and we have still 14 more days, I want to tell you, increase your fasting. Okay? Yes, you staying at home, doing nothing, no job, no work. Yes, because of coronavirus, you know, going out. So increase your fastings. Okay, what will that do? That will make your immune system strong. Yes, if there is anything wrong in the body, that will remove the wrong things from the body. So fasting actually helps you to be stronger. Yeah, fasting helps you to be stronger. Dates, you will have dates in the evening. Kazur, yeah, tamar. Tamar is, makes you stronger as well. Yes, you will have lots of water. Water will clear up anything wrong in the body. Yes, so these days I will say the best advice that I can give to someone, I will say fast. You will get the reward of sunnah, you will get a healthy life, and your body will be prepared for Ramadan. Your body will be ready for Ramadan, as Ramadan coming after 14 days, as I said. So, prepare yourself for Ramadan by fasting a lot. That's number one. Number two, by praying a lot. Increase your prayers. 
okay pray your before if you were praying faraid only then i will say increase your sunnat and if you were praying sunnat fardan sunnat anyway then increase some nafal okay pray some extra prayers before the salah pray some extra prayers after the salah okay yes i know there are mosques are closed but pray at home pray with the jamaat with your family and children yeah with everyone increase your prayers so first i said increase start fasting if you're not if you if you if you're if you're not fasting then start fasting if you're fasting then increase your fasting if you're praying regularly properly then increase it if you're not praying then start praying now yes if you're not praying sunnah then start praying sunnah now if you're not praying nafal start praying nafal now okay next what you need to do increase recitation of the quran halaqa of the quran hadith and other things okay anything islamic sit down in the in the halaqa read a aqidah book aqidah means belief talk about belief in allah what are those things we should believe and why we should believe talk talk about these things to your children to your family members to your relatives next thing after reciting Quran, you need to increase your dua, the level of dua. Yes, in the Sha'ban, month of Sha'ban, there is a night, the 15th night, dua is gets accepted. So make dua to Allah. The Ramadan coming up, make dua to Allah. Say to Allah, Allah, take me to Ramadan. Allah, keep me alive that I can reach Ramadan. Yes, ask Allah, say to Allah, well, Allah, keep me alive so I can reach Ramadan. Yeah. Say to Allah, oh Allah, if, I, if I'm about to die, give me a few more days so I can die in Ramadan. Yes, so ask Allah for you to reach the Ramadan. Ramadan is the month of blessing, month of rahmah, month of forgiveness, yeah? month of kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as Ramadan coming up, prepare yourself by fasting, by reading Quran, by doing good deeds, by making dua, and remember... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is open to you. Allah wants to forgive you. Allah wants to show his kindness to you. Let me share a hadith. In the hadith it says, Inna Allah la yattali'u fi laylatin nisfi min sha'ban fayaghfiru li jami'i khalqih illa li mushrikin aw mushahin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pays extra attention to the mankind on the 15th night of sha'ban. On the 15th night of Sha'ban means mid month of Sha'ban and the night Allah pays extra attention to the mankind and then what فَيَغْفِرُ لِجَمِيعِ خَلْقِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives everyone Allah forgives everyone إِلَّا لِمُشْرِكٍ أَوْ مُشَاحِنٍ except the mushrik who associates partners with Allah and mushahin who's got jealousy in his heart who's got bad feeling for others Allah doesn't forgive these two people other than that, Allah forgives everyone in the in the in the in the humanity. Yeah, Allah forgive all the people. Allah wants to forgive. So what you need to do in these in these days that you need to clean your heart. First of all, you need to say anyone who have hurt me anyhow. Yeah, anyone who done something wrong at me. Yeah, I have forgiven them. That's something you need to clear your heart, brothers and sisters, all of you from all across the world. I want to share the message to you: that clear your heart. Okay, and then ask Allah, watch Allah will accept your du'as. Secondly, if you have done any shirk in life, if you said anything else can, can give you good life other than Allah, if you said anything else can give you children other than Allah, if you said anything else can give you rizq other than Allah, then those called shirk. Yes, come away from it and say, Allah, forgive me if I've done any shirk in my life. Yeah, you are only one who give me life. You are only one who give me death. You are only one who give me rizq. You are only one who give me izzah, respect. And you are only one who give me money, who give me children. Say to Allah and declare your belief to Allah again. And say to Allah, Allah forgive me if I've done any shirk in my life. Yes, and then say to Allah, Allah forgive me and make me amongst your pious servants. Allah will forgive you as well. Yes, so if you've done any shirk, but you do tawbah, through tawbah it gets forgiven. If you have any jealousy, through tawbah, it can be forgiven. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives the mankind, entire mankind, in the night of 15th, the night of Sha'ban. So make dua to Allah to forgive you. Okay, inshallah. Let's see one more hadith. <clears throat> Another hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa hadith comes in, uh, yes, uh, hadith comes in Ibn Majah. He says, 
عن عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها قالت فقدت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ذات ليلة فخرجت أطلبه فإذا هو بالبقيع رافع رأسه إلى السماء يا عائشة فقال يا عائشة أكنت تخافين أن يحيف الله عليك ورسوله قالت قد قلت وما بذلك ولكني ظننت أنك أتيت بعد النساء بعد نسائك فقال إن الله تعالى ينزل ليلة النصف من شعبان إلى السماء الدنيا فيغفر لأكثر من عدد من عدد عشر غنم الكلب. Long story, let me turn it short. Aisha Siddiq رضي الله تعالى عنها she says that I didn't find Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم in bed one night. Then I followed him. I found him in Baqi. And then when I found him Baqi, he sensed it that I'm behind him. He said, Aisha, are you spying on me? Means, are you thinking I'm going to go to someone else while it's your turn, while it's your share? Yeah, and I'm going to go to sleep some uh, in the in the other other wife's houses. She said, well, I'm a human being. I might think like that. He said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah ta'ala yanzilu laylatan nisfi min sha'ban. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns his attention, puts his attention on the 15th night of sha'ban to the sama'i dunya, to the sky, what we can see. There are seven layers of sky. He pays his attention to the lowest sky, means he pays his attention to the dunya, to the earth. And then what? فَيَغْفِرُ لِأَكْثَرِ مِنْ عَدَدِ شَعْرِ غَنَمِ الْكَلْبِ Then he forgives people more than the hair on the body of a dog and body of the dogs of the people of Bani Kalb. So people of Bani Kalb, they used to have a lot of dogs. And now, whatever, how many hairs on their body? Who knows? Unless the Prophet ﷺ said, more than the hair, more than the amount of hairs on the body of the, those dogs, Allah forgives on that night. So what do you mean by that? The meaning of this, in this hadith, is Allah forgives people. That's the brief, the moral of the hadith, is that Allah forgives people on the mid Shaban. Why? Why Allah forgives people in the mid Shaban? Because in the welcoming of Ramadan, Allah shows his excitement. Allah shows his happiness. The blessed month is coming, the month of Quran, month of Allah, eh? month of believers month of pious people is coming and because of the excitement Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get everyone excited and get everyone ready Allah forgives people so they are pure and they are clean so they can prepare themselves for the Ramadan okay so from this hadith we learned that in the month of Sha'ban we need to do a lot of good deeds okay yes we need to ask dua but not just dua prayers if we're not praying we need to pray if we're not reciting we need to recite Quran if we're not fasting, we need to fast some of the days. Okay, in another hadith, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِذَا كَانَ لَيْلَةُ النِّسْفِ مِنْ شَعْبَانِ فَقُومُوا لَيْلَهَا Okay, so, uh, okay, that's fine. Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, he says that whenever the night of Sha'ban comes, then do some ibadah. Okay, that hadith has been uh, uh, marked as a, uh, as a, an authentic hadith so we will stay away from it but the, the, in terms of s praying at night what I want to say that uh, don't just pray at night on the 15th of Sha'ban alone pray at night every day pray tahajjud every day Rasulullah used to pray tahajjud every day Rasulullah used to fast on every Monday and Thursday okay so because of Sha'ban you can fast almost every day but if you want to stick to original sunnah of the whole year, then you stick to Mondays and Thursdays, okay, inshallah. And pray tahajjud at night and ask Allah to forgive you, inshallah. Okay, and as I said, preparation for Ramadan, increase the recitation of the Quran and increase the translation. Understand the Quran, read the Quran, understand the Quran, inshallah. And ask dua to Allah, oh Allah, keep us safe. Keep us healthy and get us to Ramadan. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Allahumma balighna Ramadan. He used to say, Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Wa Allah, take us to Ramadan. So I will conclude my talk by saying that dua. Wa Allah, Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Wa Allah, take us to Ramadan. So these are few virtues are shared, few benefits are shared. So as Ramadan coming up, all of you make dua, make dua for me and start sharing messages to everyone. As we know, the people not going to mosques anymore. And because they're not going to mosques, they're missing out a lot of information. They're missing out a lot of messages, a lot of important things. And to be honest, I will say many people, they're missing out the, 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 the blessings and beauty of the 
community gathering and community praying together. And because of that, a lot of uh, the, you know, awareness, when you go to the mosque, you, you, people talk, it's the month of Sha'ban, only these many days left. And that actually gives them a boost. They want to prepare themselves and thus they're missing out. So what I want to you to, I want to tell all of you to share these videos to everyone. So that's actually boosts them and gives them a reminder about Ramadan. One last thing I want to share, you, share, share with you all, my friends, that uh, Taraweeh, many people, they ask, Sheikh, what's happening to Taraweeh? Are we going to pray or are we not going to pray? What do we do? I will say, brothers and sisters, which one more important? Taraweeh prayer or Jumu'ah prayer? Okay? Which one more valuable? Which one is more strong? Jumu'ah or Taraweeh? Now, if we are unable to pray Jumu'ah, how are we going to pray Taraweeh? In the mosques. Yeah? So if the Jumu'ah been taken away from the mosques because of this coronavirus situation and people are not praying in the mosques, so that means we can't do Taraweeh. Taraweeh is Sunnah. Okay? Jumu'ah is wajib or fard. Okay? So if it's fard or wajib got taken away from the mosque, no one can think about sunnah. Sunnah is something very, very uh, last after the fard and wajib gets done. Then you think about the sunnah. So what I will say, don't worry about praying taraweeh in the masjid, but there is other alternatives. What are those alternatives? That you can pray taraweeh at home. Okay? You can do your own jama'ah. Okay? And I will say, this is a... A, a, a wonderful opportunity to the pair for the parents those whose children are hafiz or hafiz of the few Jews yes let's say let me give you uh, an example let's say if your son is hafiz of five paras yeah you tell him to lead taraweeh with these five paras whole month imagine by end and by the time by the end of the month his five five Jews will be very strong these five chapters of the Quran will be very strong because he led it whole month he, read, he was reading these verses on these pages so if your son is half is of two chapters five chapters ten chapters utilize his ability and make him imam in the house same with the daughters if your daughters are half is up then she can lead prayer for the ladies only ladies and children so if your daughter knows few Jews, few chapters, then tell her to lead the prayer for the ladies. Okay, if there is no men, uh, Hafiz or men who knows the Quran, so men can pray on their own. Yeah, and ladies, they can pray Jama'ah of the Taraweeh. One girl can lead it or one lady can lead it and ladies can pray behind that, behind the Imam. Okay, so utilize it. There are many ways to utilize your knowledge, utilize your energy, utilize your thinking, utilize your hikmah, wisdom. So utilize it. So if your son is half is of few chapters, tell him to lead Taraweeh. If, so if your son is half is of full Quran, then tell him to lead the Taraweeh at home. We read really the full Quran so you all can hear. And also what you can do. Let me give you another idea. There was one Imam. He went to the mosque a long time ago. He went to the masjid. And the masjid was looking for Imam, for Taraweeh. And that was that on the day where Ramadan begins, on the first day of Ramadan. They were talking, they were looking for a Hafiz. And eventually the word came to the Imam. They don't know that this person is Imam. He's just praying, he's just a, a stranger. He went up to them and he said, I will lead Taraweeh. If you are really looking for Imam, I will lead Taraweeh. They said, how? You look like a normal man. He said, but I can learn the Quran and lead the Taraweeh. And what he did? He learned one chapter, one, one, one chapter, you know, 30 chapters. He learned one chapter a day and led the Taraweeh. Or a little bit more than a chapter a day and led the Taraweeh whole month. So this is something I can also encourage you for. That you can memorize something every day. You don't have to memorize that one whole chapter if you can't. But you can memorize two pages, three pages and you can lead Taraweeh. If you are five of you in the family, let's say four sons and father. Yes, tell all of them. To memorize two pages you memorize two pages as well so five people memorizing 10 pages 10 pages are enough to lead 20 rakat okay read half a page in each rakat you see solutions are there so this will encourage you to memorize the quran this will give you opportunity to memorize the quran this will give you a chance to memorize the quran do you see yeah? So daughters can do that as well ladies can do that as well they can memorize the quran and they can do own jama'ah where they learn the Quran in the daytime, in the nighttime, they prove it in the salah that they know it or they don't know it. Okay, inshallah. So there are opportunities. Utilize those, inshallah. Memorize Quran 
And if there is no children at home, only father, then I will say you memorize something every day and lead the taraweeh. Okay, inshallah. There is another way. Yes, in uh, third world countries, for example, Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, what they do, where there is no imam who knows the entire Quran, what they do, they call surah taraweeh. Yeah, they call it surah taraweeh, means they read surahs only. So in the first rakat, he will read alam tara kaifa. In the second rakat, he will read surah Quraysh. In the third rakat, he will read surah tul ma'un, means ara'ayt al -ladhi. In the third rakat, in the fourth rakat, he will read surah tul kawthar. All the way, he's going to go to surah tul nas. It's ten rakat. Alam, surah tul alam tara kaifa, surah tul fil to surah tul nas is the ten rakat, ten surahs. And then on the eleventh rakat, he starts again from surah tul fil alam tara kaifa. Yeah, 12 rakat surah al quraish li ilaf al quraish 13th rakat in uh, surah al ma'un and then he goes on so there are many ways that's one way i showed you what in the third world countries they do there are other other way that let's say you know a small portion of the quran from throughout the quran you can read those portions you can revise those and read those small portions and you can lead taraweeh okay so don't be hopeless taraweeh is not gone taraweeh is still there and it's giving you more opportunity to read the Quran and practice the Quran more. So utilize those opportunities, learn Quran, practice it, pray Taraweeh at home, inshallah. And this will give the opportunity to pray everyone together. Yes, for the first time in life that everyone, mother, father, children, parents, everyone will pray together. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our Jumu'ahs, accept our Taraweeh, accept our recitation, accept our Sha'ban's fasting. And may Allah give us the blessings of the fastings of Ramadan. Month of Ramadan. Ramadan. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Don't forget to share my video to everyone and don't forget to encourage everyone to subscribe to my YouTube channel where they will find a lot more videos of my lessons. Wassalamu alaikum again.